Hey there, this is Zach Henderson, and thanks for listening to Henderson Performance Radio. Got a great powerlifting-themed episode for you today, and this one is with Adrian Thomas. Adrian is a super passionate powerlifter and USAPL referee. In this conversation, she details how she got into the sport, her background with fitness, and what the sport of powerlifting means to her, why it's so special, her work with Girls Who Powerlift, and her goals for the rest of 2017 and beyond. Her enthusiasm is positively infectious, so I'm sure you will enjoy listening to this conversation as much as I had recording it. So with all that being said, this is Adrian Thomas. All righty, well, we are on the line with Miss Adrian Thomas. Adrian, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I can't complain. So we have already been reminiscing about USAPL Raw Nationals 2016. We are on the verge of 2017. And before we get too far off in the weeds, tell everybody about yourself, your athletic background, and how you got into lifting heavy weights. Woohoo! So uh, I always don't know where to start. I feel like a lot of girls have the exact same story when it comes to like how they got into powerlifting. So I'll save that for the end. But um, athletic background, I'm from a really athletic family. Like I have a twin sister who plays basketball who like excelled at it and I did not excel at it. Um, and then I did track, um, track and field in high school. I, I was a thrower and I had no muscle on my body, but I was like, throwing's fun. So I was a sprinter and a thrower. Um, and I moved to Chicago for college and I kind of just fell out of sports. Uh, sports didn't really exist much. They just, I started in art school, so there wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't accessible for me. So I just kind of was like, oh, I'm living my life. Um, and then in like 2011, I had put on like 20 pounds since starting college and I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to lose weight. Um, so, and then I went straight into cardio bunny mode, which is cool if that's your thing, but I was never a runner. I was a sprinter when I did run. So like at that time, like marathons and 5Ks and 10Ks are a really big thing. So I was like, I'm gonna run. And I remember like the first workout thing I ever did was <laughs> 30 day shred. Do you know what that is? I am not familiar. <laughs> it's 30 day shred. Um, it's like a workout video and I was trying to run. And then from there I was like, I guess I should lift weights. And I was like lifting six days a week and doing cardio six days a week. And like the weight was melting off, but I was also starving myself and I was also overworking myself. So I got to a point where I was like five, eight, 140 pounds. And I was convinced I was obese. Like I was still convinced that like, I wasn't help, I wasn't skinny enough. I didn't look good enough yet. Like if I woke up in the morning, I didn't have abs. It like decided my whole day. Um, so luckily around that time, my best friend had just started dating a guy who got her into powerlifting. And I was like, oh, I want to power lift. Uh, so I met with them one day. They showed me squat, bench and deadlift. And that was it. And then from there, I went home and I was like on strong lifts. I was like Googling everything I could to find more information on like what the main movements were um, and how to do it. So at that point, I decided I was going to power lift. I had no idea really what it was, but I was like, I'm going to power lift and I'm going to be great at this. Um, and when you start, you know, what's programming? You're just going to the gym, maxing out every other day. <laughs> so, Five reps, one rep. Yeah. It's all good. I was just like going in the gym every other day and just like trying to lift heavy. Um, and there was no periodization. There was, there was nothing. Um, so the friend suggested like some programs for me and I would always do like the first two weeks of the program that I'd be like, Oh, it's time to max out. So like, I, I could not follow a program to save my life. Like it was rough. Um, but then my first meet ever was in January of 2016. And that was the first time I was, in November or so, in November of 2015, I was like, I'm going to find a program and I'm going to run it and I'm going to compete. So I ran this program that I found on the internet while also still learning, you know, this whole process, I'm just learning more about programming and what that actually means. <laughs> um, so I ran this program for my meet and um, I competed for the first time January 31st of 2016. 
it was actually at my gym. Um, I'm at an old school powerlifting gym in the city of Chicago called BNW. And Dennis Brady was hosting his first meet in like forever. Um, so I just got lucky that it was at my home gym. Yeah. Um, I didn't know anyone at the time still, though. I just was kind of popping in and out. Um, but at this meet, it was all women's meet, too, which is even better. So I got there. I competed. I just remember, like, I didn't know anyone but my best friend. And, like, people were cheering for me. And I was like, what? Yo, cheer. <laughs> like, it didn't matter that I had, you know, 20 pounds less than the person after me was going to have on the bar or whatever it was. It just was insane. I remember, like, I hit my third squat and went three for three in squats. And I just started bawling. <laughs> it was just <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And, like, I've been hooked ever since then. Um, I've obviously learned a lot more um, about, like, programming style. And for the while, for a long time, I did my own programming and things and just learning because I was poor and, like, I couldn't afford a coach. Like, this wasn't an option. So I was like, I'm not going to use that as an excuse. It's not going to be a cripple. I'm just going to learn as much as I can and bother as many people as I can with questions and figuring it out. Um so yeah, I, I just did that. And from there, I was just hooked. And since then, it's, I mean, every meet is the same, like, feeling as the first. And my best friend and I were feely people. So we always, like, it's not a meet till we cry, but we cried. Right. <laughs> they're all happy tears. Sometimes they're not. But, um, yeah, so since then, I've competed. It's funny. I've competed at the same four meets. So I did um, the Chicago women's meet in January of 16. I did the Chicago women's meet in January of 17 for this year. I did the Badger Open the summer of 16. And then I did the Badger Open this year. That was my most recent meet. So just been, just been along for the ride, dealing with, you know, growing and watching the sport grow and like valuing my progress within it. Cause Lord, it's, it's tough. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's pretty much my background. Cool. <laughs> So when you started out, did you have a particular lift that came as a struggle for any particular reason? Oh, yeah. Uh, the bench press is still as a struggle. I've just learned to appreciate the struggle. Yeah. Um, it's so funny. Now when I complain about, like, my limbs, I hear Stammy Johnson in my head. Like, she made this hilarious post one day being, like, stop complaining. Like, you'll figure it out. Uh, don't make excuses. But, yeah, so I remember – my long arms, I just remember being like, I cannot bench press because there's this range of motion. It's just like <laughs> a lot. Um, it's something I struggled with for a really long time. It's like a love hate relationship. And then I had a shoulder issue last summer. Um, so it kind of kept me out a little, but yeah, starting off bench was rough. I always say it's interesting because squats came really natural to me. So I remember the first time a girl asked me for tips on squats, I realized I didn't know anything about squats because I just was like, oh, I just do it. Like, it just happens. So, you go um, down, ah, then you come up. Sometimes you yeah. do it again. Ah, then you just yeah. rack away. It's funny, too, because also some people ask you for help and you realize, like, oh, I actually don't know, which I love. I love when I get to, like, learn new things. Um, I'm an education major in the city, so I'm studying to teach children, so I love learning. But, yeah, bench was rough. And then also people think it's funny now because sumo is just like, I'm just sumo queen. But uh, when I first deadlifted, I was pulling conventional as most people do. I remember when I first tried to switch to sumo, I was like, this is not, mm -hmm. this is ridiculous. I don't know why people lift like this. Um, but, um, but I just stuck to it and tried to adjust for what I needed to. I think that learning the lifts is hard, especially when you're by yourself because you're reading all these blogs and all these articles about all the perfect ways to do something. And you also have like the internet who's all, you know, they'll all tell you that you're doing it wrong. Um, so it was hard trying to just adjust and keep in mind that every squat, every bench, every deadlift is not going to look the same, um, on every person because everyone's body is different. So like for bench, it was learning how to utilize what I could do to improve my technique and improve the weight I could lift. So for me, that was adapting the widest grip that's legally possible <laughs> right. and utilize massive arch. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and that's because my body allows me to do it. So I figured out a way around my long arm problem. It's still a problem, but I've learned to work with it. Sure. I'm s <laughs> sorry, continue. <laughs> well, I was going to say, what prompted the switch to sumo? Um, someone said to me, you have really long legs, you're supposed to sumo. And I was like, no. Like, and I was never a person that thought sumo was cheating. I just 
I had no desire to pull sumo. Um, but then this person was pretty persistent on being like, you should at least try because your body is like 80% legs and it'll really help. <laughs> um, so yeah, I gave it a try. And I honestly can't remember now why I stuck with it because I vividly remember hating it. Yeah, I vividly remember like sucking at it and thinking I was never going to get it down. Um, and now I pull sumo. That's my main myth. I have to force myself to um, pull conventional, which is another issue. Sure. So what does your training look like these days, obviously in comparison to the early days of all the internet hullabaloo? Well, <laughs> um, it's more organized. It's much more intentional. So um, like I said, before I had no idea of what periodization was and like what peaking was and like what performing for an end goal meant. So like, I mean, seriously, honest, I'm every other day was a max out day. Like some days I'd go in and hit triples. Some days I just go in and would squat the most I could squat. Like there was just no organization. Um, and then as I started learning and reading more, I was like, oh, there's like ways we should prepare my body to handle heavy weights. And like, maybe that's the best way to not, you know, to more consistently hit higher numbers. Cause you know, when you're maxing out every day, you'll hit a PR one day and then you'll try to hit it another day and it's not there. And you're like, well, I just hit it last week. Well, it's cause you're being an idiot. <laughs> but yeah, so it's changed um, a lot. I've run different styles of programming since then. Um, trying to figure out what's the best to like keep around. Yeah, um, but mainly now, so if we're looking at like the split, I guess maybe my split now. Sure. Um, okay, sorry. Um, I I squat two days a week, I uh, bench three days a week, and I'm only deadlifting once. Um, and a part of that is just from the programming I'm using now. I'm working with a coach, also because I have a, a bulge disc in my back that I did not get from lifting. I always feel the need to like say that because everyone's like, oh, you're gonna break. Um, I did not get it from lifting. Um, so we decreased my squat frequency um, because before I start working with him, I was using more of like a daily undulating periodization style of training, which I loved. Um, um, and if you don't know what, no, I won't go into that. I'm just so long <laughs> thing, but yeah, I love that style of training. With that, my frequency for all my lifts was was pretty high, and I wasn't really having a ton of time to recover. That's another thing too. So so from the beginning, it was just like lift, 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 lift. I knew nothing about recovery. <laughs> um, now everything that I do is very intentionally planned out to maximize my recovery and maximize my performance within each training session. Um, and then another thing that's changed at the beginning is that the beginning days that you know, I go in the gym and even when I start doing a program, if it was like hypertrophy days or lighter days, I kind of take them serious. It was just like, this is a hangout day. Like I'm going to go lift and hang out and it'll be fun. And like, while they're not maximal lifts, um, if you're not executing the lift, you're not being like intentional on, you know, what you're doing and how you're processing the lift, you're not really getting the full benefit of that accessory day or whatever it may be. Um, so something that I have now is that every time that I touch the bar, it's like how it would be in competition. If like, even if it's not a competition lift, something John, um, my coach has been drilling with me is that thinking about what the accessory work or lift is supposed to be helping with and truly focusing on implementing that and making sure that I'm utilizing it the way it should be used. Um, but yeah, those would be like the biggest changes, I guess, my split and then just like my mental mindset of like how I approach training daily. Yeah. yeah. And you know, that's, it's super common because, you know, it's, it's almost kind of like, I guess the mentality of powerlifting is a sport and it's a thing you go out there you lift a barbell one time there's almost a certain mentality like i don't know you would think like football oh you just go out and you play football and you run into each other and it's the same thing over yeah. and over again and it's like well there's drills and there's you know, yeah practice. but it's not 110 percent monday through saturday night yeah exactly and then the whole recovery side of things obviously it's it's not about how hard you can necessarily push your body at any one point in time but it's how effectively you can recover and then be ready to do something 101 percent eventually yes. at a certain point in time yep. learning, learning. absolutely 
So what are the goals for 2017 and beyond? Um, I'm so weird with goals because I don't know. But I've also been trying to be way more intentional with like stating what I want and like doing it. I think it's easy to be like timid. Um, even especially when you're new, like you feel like maybe you don't get to have a certain feeling or you don't get to set a certain goal or because that goal is not really high, it's somehow not relevant. But so like this is this is me working through the fact that this is going to be an awkward answer because I'm like working on it still. Um, I'm working on like being better with like owning my goals and being like, I want to do that. And like, there's no shame in wanting to do that. And it, so a big part of me is just kind of being like celebrating the little things that I have done. Um, but yeah, so I was up in the air for a while about if I was going to compete at nationals this year um, for a number of reasons, which I can maybe go into later, but uh, I've decided that I am going to compete. So I'll be at nationals. Um, the goal for that would be just to go and have fun like I did last year. Um, get some PRs on the platform. I am, I'm at one of most people that's in between weight classes, not in between, cause no one's technically in between. Like you're, you're a weight and you're in a weight class. You just can choose to like cut. Um, I caught myself cause I was like, I don't fit in the weight class. And I was like, no, you do. It just isn't the weight class you want. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I decided I'm going to compete at nationals. I'm not going to do any cutting. Um, so I'm just going to compete as I, as I show up. So we'll see. Um, so that's a goal just to compete at nationals. Um, I, the goal for last year was a 400 deadlift, but you know, there are some issues, um, but I have that in the bag now. So the only like number I'll put out there is I want to pull 420 in nets. It would, it would cause a waterworks. I would cry like a baby. And I could end my whole week and if I make that happen, but there's no shame in putting that out there. So I'm gonna put that out there. That's the goal for nationals. Um, as far as other lifting stuff, uh, yeah, just being an ambassador for Girls of Powerlifts is fun. We get to do a lot of blog work. Um, I get to meet a lot of people just because just because of the affiliation. I meet a ton of people that are like, hey, I know you from Ivy, or hey, I know this from XYZ, and I love that so much. Um, it's, like, been my favorite part of the sport is just the, the community. Um, like I said, I didn't know any of the girls at the gym when I started, but right after our first meet, we all were like, we should – we should get together and like lift on Saturdays. So now we have this like huge group of like 30 women at my gym and like girls all over the city who meet up and lift weekly. Um, you know, we're, I'm actually trying to organize a women's Illinois like hangout right now, powerlifting thing, <laughs> cause there's a lot of us here, we're all spread out. Um, but yeah, so continue to like meet new people. I love that. Um, hopefully get to travel more. I also am a ref for you in USAPL. So, I love, I, I can spend, some people get bored at meets. I don't know if you're one of those people who like, you're hyped up by the end, you're like, I'm over this. I don't get like that. I can go to a meet and spend a weekend, eight days, I mean, eight days, eight hours, two days, Saturday, Sunday, all day at a meet and be content with my life. <laughs> like, uh, I love it. So the plan is to referee some more meets. Um, and yeah, right now that's the only big goals, I guess I could state that I have right now. I'm, I don't know, I guess I'm just really focused on like taking it day by day and seeing where it goes um, and not letting those goals like distract me from like my process right now because that's how it was for a while. I'd set these goals and then if things didn't happen in the time that I wanted or didn't happen the way I wanted, it was really hard for me to enjoy it because it was like, you know, oh, it wasn't soon enough or oh, it wasn't fast enough or oh, Elizabeth's still lifting X, Y, Z. So yeah so all great stuff and you mentioned obviously that you are a girls who power lift ambassador and if anybody hasn't read any of your articles obviously they can check it out at the girls who power lift blog which if all you've been doing is looking at the awesome pictures and videos you should definitely check out some of the writing that's going on on that yeah. website um so tell us a little bit about how you got plugged into that community and <laughs> and, and that whole thing so it's funny, I um I was following Girls Who Power Lift. I was ghost following. So this is so weird. I don't think I've even told why I did this. But I wasn't following, following the page for a really long time. I just was like creeping in, checking in daily. Um, I was just obsessed with it. And then I actually started following the page. I didn't know Ivy at this time either. I just was like, this is this is an Instagram page. 
Um, but Ivy, I think at some point, had like made a video introducing herself to everyone. And we had like, I had sent like a thanks for being you message on Instagram or random things here and there, but never any contact. But one day I was at home and I was just like going through my fields and I was like, I really want to write this piece. And I really want people to read it because I like sharing my thoughts. And I think that a lot of times we don't talk about our feelings enough. I'm one of those people. So I think it's important to like read other people's views and read their feelings and see their experiences and see that like, you're not alone. And like, we're all in this together. Um, so I reached out to Ivy and asked her if I could write a piece for the blog. This is way back before I was even affiliated with her. And she had told me, write it, I'll see, like, we'll see. So I wrote a piece, it's called Unapologetically Us. It's still online, it's on the blog. If you just like search Girls Who Power Unapologetically Us, you'll find it. It's still like my favorite thing I've ever written. Um, it was so long, <laughs> like it was so long, but it was all just on like the standard of like women in strength sports and like how we've come to be in this transition. I wrote that for her, she posted it. Um, she was super sweet about it. That kind of ended. Um, a few months later, she made a post on Instagram being like, we want to run these camps around the country. Like, who, who, where would you want to do it? And she put like five cities up. And I instantly was like, we can host it at BMW Gym in Chicago. Like, that'd be great. Like, <laughs> like super like, we should do it here. And she kind of was like, oh, that's nice. Like, thanks for the offer. We'll see what gets the most votes and we'll make it from there. Long story short, people ended up picking Chicago. We ended up doing it, deciding to do it at my gym. So from there, we were in contact because we were planning this event um so phone calls emails those things um this is all in like the summer and fall of last year and i finally met her in real life at uh nationals last year i like stopped by the booth i said hi we chit chatted a little we ended up hanging out a lot over the weekend we just kept like ending up next to each other and whatever and i remember like we both went home after and i had sent her a text message because like i said i'm a feely person like i'm big if you feel something and you want to express it, like express it. So I texted her and just was like, thanks so much for like being so sweet. It was so great meeting you. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We clicked so well. I'm so happy. Like, you know, I met you. And she pretty much echoed the same thing. It was just like, it was so fun. You think we knew each other for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, at that point, we just had that relationship. We we're playing this event for this upcoming uh, spring. And we were just, you know, in contact. But nothing was, you know in the air. And then one day in the winter, she emailed me and she said, like, Hey, Corey and I are talking about it. We really like for you to be an ambassador for us. You know, is that something you're interested in? No pressure if you're not like, cause that's how Ivy is. She's like, no pressure if you're not. And I'm like, why would I not want to be an ambassador for you? Um, but yeah, so of course I got back to her and was like, I would love to do this. Um, and not even just cause it's an ambassadorship, but I think there's tons of companies all over. There's tons of I mean, Instagram now too, there's so many athletic apparel companies and so many sponsorships and things of that nature. Uh, but it is awesome that like this company that I truly looked up to you and I truly value what they stand for, um, they wanted me to represent them. And I just remember like when she asked at first, I was, and once again, I mean this in the least self-deprecating way ever, but at first I was like, why would you want me to represent your brand? Like, I mean, I literally have like no followers on the internet. Like I'm not, just, I'm not a world record holder. Like, you know, I just instantly was comparing myself to all these people that I did know that she, she has as ambassadors and just being like, why me? And really took some time to sit back and realize that like, it's just because of who I am and like what I'm passionate about and what I represent. And um, yeah, we talked and it was just like, I understand the brand and I think that's awesome. And like I said, I being them, any company can sell clothes. Any company can even sell an image of like inclusivity and uplifting. Um, I don't mean this as a knock to any other company out there, but I don't see the representation and the diversity on any other page that I see on her page. I mean, like in every facet of the, every meaning of the word, um, you know, whether it's religion, you know, whether it's race, whether it's size, whether it's, you know, length in the sport, whether it's a hundred pounds or 600 pounds, like, it's just spotlighting women and like celebrating their strength. And like, it just blows my mind. I just, there's, it just is awesome. Like, you know, I always say you don't see representation super important when you're growing and developing as a human. Um, it's nice to see people that you can relate to, whether it's for whatever reason. And she has a space where everyone can see people that look like them 
and excelling and being new and trying new things. And yeah, so I just, I, I'm in love with the brand and she asked me to represent, be an ambassador. I just, it's like, of course I will. And from there, you know, we helped do the camp. We were in the camp. The camp was the most amazing weekend on this planet. Like, <laughs> it was great. And then, uh, yeah, I've been working with her since then. And I just, I love Girls Power Lift. <laughs> Sounds super corny, but. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, uh, I think maybe officially on or off the podcast, I don't quite remember, but I was echoing a lot of the same sentiments is that Girls Who Power Lift is, I think, a really special, I mean, even just, like you said, going beyond just the fact that it's an apparel company. It's yeah. representative of something a lot more, and it was right probably after the podcast with Ivy when the camp idea really came out. I thought that was awesome because, I mean, you know, I really think that's where this, I really think that that's where the power of the internet, like, yeah. comes to full fruition is not, you know, not, not just in the clothes, not just in the Instagram, but hey, let me, let me shake your hand, say hello, yeah. let's yeah. be friends, and actually talk in real life and yeah. stuff like um you know places like girls who power lift i think are really uh set up to make a much broader much deeper impact with live events and i can only imagine yeah. that that's something that is going to grow over the course of time and i'm super excited about that yeah no and just to like echo off that 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 idea of not just like the internet, we always say in real life, IRL, but like in real life people, I mean, you know, I had met Leanna Carr at Nationals last year, super briefly. And like, you know, I'm a nobody and she's Leanna Carr, you know? Um, but I remember when she came to the camp, her and Sammy were there and all the girls, I remember we, people were like, they're like, I cannot believe I just met, you know, Sammy No Pants, that's her Instagram name. I cannot believe I just met Leanna Carr. I cannot believe I just met Laura Phelps. And like, they weren't just like, habitually nice because like they're like they they helped me and they seem genuinely interested in like learning and you know there's girls that I've been friends with friends with on Instagram but I never met them in person I got to meet them in person for the first time and at the camp I think that's like a really special thing we all get to share with each other we all got to like meet and be a part of the first one and I know Ivy has ones she wants to do in the future so they're going to be do we're going to be bumping them out hopefully and I'm hoping to be a part of them for as long as I can because <laughs> it was it was awesome. And like you said, just is that, that in real life implement implementing something in real life that you've just talked about on the internet. <laughs> yeah. And, and also something that you had kind of mentioned, uh, again, before the interview is that people, you know, certainly powerlifting is not as a popular or widespread thing as yeah. sort of like <laughs> basketball, like for example, but our version of uh, LeBron James, you yeah, sure. you have the opportunity to meet and to say hello. Yeah. And until you know, until our powerlifting heroes start getting paid, yeah, you know, tens cool. of millions of dollars to do what they do, it's yeah. driven by the passion and the love and something that's deeper than the the machine of professional sports. Yeah. So for sure, I mean. So last year I met, I, I should say I met, I met Jennifer Thompson four times. <laughs> I just, I met her and I ran to her. Um, but every time she was just as sweet as could be. I just remember being like, this is real life. And like, you can even talking to her and like other giant powerlifters, like they're just so passionate about the sport. And like, they're just people just like the rest of us who love this sport and like work their asses off. And this is so cool because where else do you have the opportunity to like meet your idols? And, chit chat with them casually yeah share share a common ground like <laughs> yeah well you know it's funny i i don't think i had mentioned this but i'm from charlotte north carolina jen thompson's yeah. neck of the woods yeah i had the opportunity to work out in her garage a couple of times i would cry she know. posted but just like a down how down to earth she is she um posted recently about some guy who was trying to figure out the best gift he could get his fiance or something or something for their anniversary. And he was like, she would just love to lift with you. She like, she let these strangers come to her, like come to her gym and lift with her. Like, how cool is that? Yeah. Oh. 
That's yeah. just the best. She's great. <laughs> and, you know, again, it goes back to we're all in this for the love of the game, so to speak. Nobody's yeah. really in it for the money, at least no, at least that I can <laughs> at least that I can deduce. Out in um, USAPL. No, oh, <laughs> hey, hey, there we go. Well, this, I'm kidding. <laughs> This may or may not turn into the follow-up to the Jug Life podcast, uh, but yeah. <laughs> um, I listened to that podcast. I was like, in it, like, what's going on? Okay, sorry. We don't oh, need to yeah. talk about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Keith, who was a little bit of the, you know, catalyst behind all that goings on. Um, I mean, that was that was pretty cool for me because. Keith was the guy who was kicking my ass to such a large degree during my first few competitions. Where I was like, "Holy, yeah. oh my, oh my God, what is, what is yeah. going on here?" Those reality checks. Uh, I'm like oh, crashing down. Oh yeah, <laughs> like like no chance. But in any case, so I've obviously been following him since yeah. back in the day, and then seeing what's transpired. But yeah, you know, you make a you make a good point, and uh, it's just up to us to. Uh, Fight the good fight, I suppose. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Cool people. So, Adrian, certainly I appreciate your your time and for sharing. I'm so sorry I was rambling on. I was like rambling and rambling, and I was like, it's been 40 minutes. I feel so bad. <laughs> well, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> what I would like to maybe wrap up with is, you probably know this question is coming, what piece of advice might you impart or words you might have for the Adrian who was all of all on that 30 day shred, that 30 day shred game. What, if you could go back in time, what might you say to that Adrian or some young woman who might be able to relate to that? Um, the, I got two things. Cause I'm looking up a quote, direct quote to make sure I say it right to you. But the first one is, being it for the right reasons, um, being for the love of the sport, you know, it's not sunshine and butterflies all the time. Sometimes you get hurt. Sometimes you have a bad training cycle. Sometimes you have a bad meet. Sometimes you bomb out. Whatever the reason is, if you don't actually love it, you're not going to enjoy it. And I had a discussion with a girl last year and she was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know if the sports are me. You know, I'm just having such a bad time. And I was like, yeah, I've been there. What always comes back to for me is that does the good outweigh the bad? And like, does my love of the sport outweigh whatever else is going on? And it does. And that was what helps guide me because I truly love it so much that even with the ups and downs and whatever it could be, like I know it's something I'm passionate about and something I love and it's something that's empowered me and it's something I can always do. Um, so therefore I have it, I just, I love it. The other thing, the quote that I was telling you, I was looking up to make sure I had it right. I actually was doing interviews um, for the girls college page and the, my coach actually his response to one of the questions i said what's one piece of advice you have for new strength athletes and he used the phrase have aggressive patience and when i read that i was like oh my gosh like have aggressive patience like you need to be aggressive in your pursuits of your goals and you need to be you know headstrong and focused but you also have to be patient you also can't rush it and you also can't get upset you know because things are going slower, but just because they're going slow doesn't mean you should chill out, you know, on that drive and that ambition. That drive and that ambition needs to be just as strong, even when it's slow time. So yeah, I, my one, I always mess up that, it's only two words, but have aggressive patience, like stood out to me so much now. It's, like, it's so beautiful. So yeah, have aggressive patience and love the sport and you will be in for the long haul. And compete because once you do that, you're just stuck. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Pretty much, like the powerlifting environments are like no other competitive environment that exists. And I'm from a family of athletes, and I've done a bunch of sports, and nothing else compares to powerlifting meets at all. Like, just is the best. But yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Dig it. Well, Adrian, <laughs> thank you so much again. And where can people say hello to you? on the internet, if not in real life. Thank you for having me. Um, I live in Chicago, Illinois. I train out of b and Gym um, on the north side. So if you're in the Chicago surrounding areas, hit me up. 
I've got random girls hitting me up all the time and coming in. It's like my favorite thing ever when I get to meet a new person. So if you are in the area, holla. And I am on Instagram at A as an Apple. Wait, what's my Instagram? Oh, it's Adrian Who. Sorry. I almost gave you guys my email. So it's A D R I E N N E W H O O. There's two O's. But yeah, that's about it. <laughs> awesome. Well, Adrian. Thanks again. I do appreciate it. And I'm sure I will be seeing you in Orlando. Yeah, Raw Nationals will party it up. You'll get to see like all the excessiveness that is Adrian in real life. It's it's overwhelming. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> well, I will start training uh, yeah. at, uh, tomorrow for, for, such, yeah. for such the occasion. You have to mentally prepare yourself for it. My... Absolutely. <laughs> Adrian, thanks again. Adrian, who on Instagram? And I'll be seeing you real soon. Thanks again. And take care. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And that does it for today. Thank you, as always, for tuning in and lending us your ears. You can find the show notes to this episode at zachhenderson.com slash Adrian. Until then... Stay strong, and we'll see you soon.